nice to see you in Vienna. How are you? I'm very well. Happy well, to see you too. I'm happy to Let's see start? you too. Yes, yeah, let's start. Let's start. <laughs> Hello everyone from Vienna. Uh, this is uh, Chriso Macariu and uh, we are again uh, back here with our Meet the Artists uh, series and today I have here with me a very special guest uh, and a very special friend, James Strauss from Brazil. Yes, I'm very happy you know I'm from Brazil because for many time I work in Venezuela and people so associate me with Venezuela. No, <laughs> I even receive awards like Venezuela. So it's people I'm from Brazil, not from Venezuela. No, it's, a, it's close but not that much. <laughs> yes, not that much. Uh, I'm happy that you are here in Vienna. Uh, and uh, although it's uh, it's still the pandemic and we need to mention that we kissed each other before uh, and we are both negative tested. Yes, before the interview, it's very important it, huh? <laughs> So there aren't any mis uh, misunderstandings. Uh, dear James, um, you have been uh, characterized as the lang lang of the flute. It's funny, this is after a concert I, I gave in Arizona, United States, with the Tucson Symphony Orchestra, and uh, was a very hard contemporary piece made by the American composer Ho uh, Glenn Roger Davis. He's a dear friend, he's a very good composer, and the concert is so hard, so difficult. But I did my best, I did a, a very powerful performance, and uh, Lang Lang had played there maybe uh, two weeks before, and the newspaper <laughs> do my, <clears throat> I think I, I give too much for myself on this performance, no? They put in the other day, the phenomenon of flute is the lang lang of the flute. <laughs> yes, you are, you are indeed a phenomenon of the, of the flute and uh, as your idol, mentor and teacher, uh, uh, Jean-Pierre Rambal uh, said, you are the authentic Latin representative of the French uh, school of flute. Yeah, okay, for me, I think uh, I, uh, my career, my sound, my playing is from the French school. When I was in my first competition outside France, I took myself, oh, it's not me, it's the French school who wins, it's the, it's the best school of flute. Today you see the position of Berlin Philharmonic, the both principal flutes come from French school. And in Germany, they have many French school flutes, the United States also. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a best school. Even here in Vienna, uh, the principal of Vienna Philharmonic is studying in Paris. So it's a very, very good school, and I'm very glad to be a Latin American who can represent this French school flute. And I can, I can see and I know um, that you, your path uh, came across uh, with uh, many distinguished uh, people around the world uh, and orchestras. Can you tell us uh, some information? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I feel so lucky on my flute life because I travel so much and I met so wonderful people. For example, I met Claude Bolling, he's a famous jazz uh, who's passed away not many years, not many, many days ago. And Claude is was an icon, Claude Bolling, you know. And I was in Paris, I talked to a friend, I said, I want to meet Claude Bolling one day, maybe to play with him. I said, ah, just a moment. Hello, Claude. Have a <laughs> then two days after I moved to the house of Claude Bolling. <laughs> Our chemistry was so good and we played together. So same was of Israel Chamber Orchestra with uh, United States. I did many tours there as I love to play in that country too. And uh, I have many good meets in my life. Even with Jean-Pierre Rampal, no? was yeah. by chance I met him also and I had a few lessons with him, not too much, he was too old, but uh, uh, Mr. Zab Rostropovich is one of them. 
And that is my life. I think music is basically this. It's a meeting of do meeting people and do nice music together. And I get luck to get the nice people. And uh, you had also the luck of traveling a lot and in, in different uh, countries. Uh, as uh, I can see in Israel, you, you mentioned in, in Paris, even in Japan. And you, you mentioned that, uh, uh, you feel very close to, to the Japan, uh, public there. Yeah, it's funny because my grandfather was a musician, no? Also, no? He was, uh, all the professor was a musician. He played mandolin. And I grew up listening to mandolin, also mandolin, mandolin, orchestra of mandolin. And he played a lot of a Japanese composer, Hiro Fujikaki. Then I like, I'm very fan of this music, you know. Then after, when I was grow, grow up, you know, I saw Hiro Fujikaki did a CD for James Galway in the 90s. That was a very, very, very good CD. Then I met Hiro Fujikaki uh, six, seven years ago. And now we work together to do a new CD of his of his music, you know, to me. <laughs> now this starts because my grandfather plays his music. So now I'm working directly with him. This is a very, very good thing. Wow. This sounds uh, ri uh, like uh, a really e exciting career that you are having. And uh, now you found yourself in the middle of this pandemic in Vienna. Last time you were in Vienna was 2019, yeah. uh, where you were awarded uh, by the United Nations here in Vienna as a peace ambassador uh, for your uh, uh, humanitarian work that you did with the uh, children of El Sistema. Please tell us uh, more about this, because Everybody knows El Sistema, everybody knows uh, United Nations. Uh, let's hear your approach to, to this. Yeah, back a few years ago, I was living in Ecuador. I, I have a job there in an orchestra. Then I went to be, go to Venezuela. No? I said, let's try to go to Venezuela. Same, I found a way to go there to do a concert. Uh, the situation is not very nice there, but I travel anyway, alone. <laughs> <laughs> it's very crazy to do that, but I was alone there. Then first I was in the city of Maracay, it's a, near Caracas. Then I saw so many possibilities to work there. People have not too many resources there, so the salary is very, say, one, two euros per month. So I decided to get the money ahead and to move to Venezuela to work for free. So I was four years there working, I, I make my own orchestra there. I pay for my pocket. No, no, no one pays that. I pay for my pocket, musician, recording. So I was there working, helping people to get out of Venezuela as well. Yeah. So I get that a voluntary work. I don't get one euro for this. Yes. And uh, one Venezuelan guy who I helped to get out of Venezuela was in Vienna, and he told to the people for the United Nations about my work there. So they contacted me. Soon I get this word when I come here in 2019. This is, uh, so James Strauss, beside he's a great uh, flutist with a, a great career, has also this uh, humanitarian side of the of his har character and it's it's wonderful to to listen that there are people uh, fighting for uh, other people for justice for for people living well and uh, uh, having chances. Bravo! I'm 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 very impressed. I forgot how many times I invite people to eat because they eat sometimes one time for per day. And I, I come to the restaurant of the of the, of the El Sistema, no? People with a box like this with a little pasta, a little rice, and something they call meat. Yes. And they eat that for. For all day. So sometimes I come there and say, you, you, you and you, come with me. And they say, yes, maestro, they, they, very, they respect me so much. Let's do the restaurant. Say, no, no, my, no, come. <laughs> Shut up and eat. <laughs> <laughs> and I did that many times with many, many people there. And, uh, and the level of these people is so high. It's so high. When I, I play with them, it's like play here in Europe. 
really. It's very high level. I did six CDs with the orchestra, more chamber music there. The people, even the, the CD I did with Philip Glass there in, in Venezuela was during the very, very big fight between the police and the people in the streets. And we were all saved inside the studio. <laughs> And people dying in, outside. It was really, really a hard thing. But we did a, a CD in two days, closed it inside the studio. Wow. Uh, tell us more about uh, your work with uh, Philip Glass. It was nice because I, I, I met Philip Glass in 2011. Yeah, a bit sad situation. I went to my town. I was in the middle of a tour. I was playing in Los Angeles. So I stopped everything. I came to my town because my father was very ill. So he was dying in the hospital with cancer. It was really sad. I was in the hospital and my best friend there in Recife called me, James, come to the conservatory. They said, I have no head for it. My dad, my dad is dying. No, come now. Philip Glass is here. I said, who? <laughs> Philip, Philip Glass, Philip Glass says, yes, he's here. I want to meet you. I said, how? But they don't know me. Yeah, but they talk about you to him, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I take a cab. I went to the conservatory. Then I had the delicious conversation with Philip Glass. He comes to me, do you know, are you studying French? Yes. Yeah, I study French. Oh, on peut parler français. He don't speak French, all the conversation. Or the manager and the people who don't speak French, they, okay, let's... Let's Let, leave them alone, you know? And that Philip wants this to be alone with me. So we had an idea to a flute concerto in 2011. No? He delivered it to me in 2017. And I met, I met him again in Ecuador. Okay. In Ecuador. Uh, he told me, you play the Orfeo Suite and you please play my violin concerto on flute. He said, you sure? Yes, you can do that. And I told him, um, May I have your bless for this? You have my bless. <laughs> <laughs> then that was in December. Three months after, I was in his house in New York City. Then we discussed, discussed how you be the logistics. And at the end of the year, the CD was ready with the Camerat Simon Bolivar. And was really, really a very huge success, the CD. Over 600,000 streams on spot on spotify without counting uh, itunes and the other medias yes. <laughs> oh this is this is wonderful and so um the the work and the cd with uh, philip glass i understand that uh, was uh, one of the most important steps uh, that pushed your uh, discographic career Yes, because I had did it before with Israel, members of Israel Philharmonic. I had did two CDs with them. I, I did interesting thing, but with Philip Glass, uh, I, I never had too many views, so many views in, in Spotify. In, in. So when Universal comes to me and asks to me, look, maybe you could do some collaboration together. Let's do this contract with you. It's, a, it's Universal Music Group. Wow. <laughs> so I start with them. They ask me 12 ideas. I give you 12 ideas and they buy everything. They said, no, do we keep it very nice. It's very clean what you want. It's the very clever, your ideas. So I have the next three years, 12 CDs to do with them. So uh, Universal Records from the United States. Yeah, because Universal Music Group is a big one who englobe uh, Deutsche Grammophon, Deca, and the small, not small, but the, the, the principles of the world belong by them. Deca and Deutsche Grammophon belong to Universal. Universal, yes. So when they ask me uh, in Brazil to do, it will be published in Brazil, but it will be worldwide, you know, that, that um, you be a, a good step to be me to be here in Europe. Maybe I can transfer my contract to Europe. But here I, I'm in luck to work with very nice people. Uh, I work with two good pianists, really, really. One is Macera Rogeri from Argentina. She lives in London. She's an amazing pianist. She has many words, like the Victoire de la Musique in France. It's the very most important word of classical music in France. She had this. And uh, with Vasily Stetsianis, he's a conductor and, and, a, and a pianist. And uh, with many orchestras also, these ideas. No? <laughs> and uh, little by little, I'm doing. Now I'm finished my first CD, 
uh, you, uh, you'll be calling Lux Eterna with music by Arvo Pert, uh, Clint Mansell, Alfred Schnitke, and Dimitri Cervo. And it'll be my next release. And uh, I can't wait to to start the audience, don't you? It's, I, I, can, I can tell that you are already very excited about uh, this. Uh, and this is what you are uh, at the moment working on. Yes. I, if I tell you, my head is working four CDs now, this year already. I have four things on my head. Now I will finish this one. Then you come a Mozart CD, Vienna. Mozart is very natural, no? Mozart CD. Then I have a very special Piazzolla, who you come. Mm-hmm. And also two sonatas, Prokofiev, Isaiah e Frank. Everything will be this year, no? recording here in Vienna. All this in one year. One year. Here, uh, recorded here in, the, in Vienna, in the center of uh, the music world. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Well, I moved to Vienna to work, so I'm here work really, <laughs> really hard. But for me now, uh, Vienna is the best place of classical music in the world in this moment, because everybody in Brazil, everything will stop. The United States is a catastrophe there, but here in Vienna, we do music it's still yes. no, better than, than than any place. And this this country breathes music. Yes. So when I, when I made the decision to come here in middle of the pandemic, people are crazy go to Vienna have nothing there. Look, I come here without nothing. Look the beautiful house I, I live here. You know, and I uh, have a very nice life here. Uh, the most important, with nice people around me who have really good friends, I can count on them. This is the best thing. And you know people when you have a crisis, like we have now, this, this pandemic situation. So I'm very glad, very happy to be here in this city. It's it's happy, it makes me happy and um, makes me feel very lucky. Uh, to meet people that uh, think so much uh, positively Uh, because we are in the middle, as you said, of a pandemic and uh, nobody knows, uh, uh, nobody can foretell how the the um, the whole situation uh, will, uh, how the outcome, which uh, which will be the outcome, and um, especially for artists, um, it's a very hard period, uh, uh, and it's um, difficult uh, to, to find uh, the motivation to, to study and, and, and stay focused because everything it makes you, hurts you, around you. Um, but still, uh, then, the, here you are, people like you, uh, who left everything behind uh, in a cinematography way uh, <laughs> I don't know if I, you want to tell uh, the, the, this uh, this story uh, um, and uh, th- through difficulties and uh, a lot of dangers uh, and uh, and you came here uh, you have this uh, will uh, to to keep on fighting um, and no no matter what happens around yes the story if I can tell you is to make short no I went to Venezuela the last time in 2019 to do a recording and a few concerts no the situation was already collapsing there on that time so I met a soprano I have a Venezuelan soprano in Colombia. See, I need to travel with someone because it would be not safe anymore to travel alone. Yeah. So I met this girl. She's, she's a very good soprano. So let's, let's travel together. I pay her, her trip to, to, to Venezuela. Even travel with a girlfriend from Venezuela. The policy in the border gave me a nightmare. They revise me and everything. They ask for drugs, but not drugs. So they, they want money, you know? Yeah. 
Andando was in Venezuela, when I escaped from Venezuela, that was very difficult because they don't want to seal my passport without paying. They asked me. <laughs> and I was so pissed off with this. So I said, look, I'm not going to pay this. And I go out. No, you can't go. I go out. I take my things and I was walk to the border. And I said, I hope they don't shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to the to the bridge between the other, between Venezuela and Colombia, the British. No? And the policemen come to my passport. But where's the seal? So they want money. I don't give to them. And the police go, Colombia, so, so look to me, look at this. We are coming to Colombia. Go, come. <laughs> so I went. I went to to Colombia. Then I stayed there. I came to a friend to speak the Christmas and the New Year there. Then I went to Ecuador to fly to Vienna because that was my plan. When I when I went to Ecuador to Guayaquil, that city was very famous on the, on, on 2000, 2020 because of the pandemic coming first to South America there. And really, really strong. So they closed everything. And I was there for maybe two months without move because the airport was closed. Everything was closed. So hotels was closed. So I have no place to go. So a fan from Instagram <laughs> offered me, no, you can come to my place, Maestro. Don't worry, you can stay here. <laughs> so I stayed two months in Ecuador. Then Brazilian government send the airplanes to take the Brazilian from, from there. So I went back to Brazil. I come finally to my home, to my to my to my house there. And uh, a week later I get COVID. <laughs> <laughs> but of course. <laughs> not in Ecuador, not but in Recife, in my town I get this corona. Yeah. But with me what's okay, I did a prophylactic treatment. Most people don't believe, but I tell you, they don't believe, but I, I took a name here yeah. with uh, hydroxychloroquine and uh, zinc and azithromycin. So I did five days of treatment, me and my brother as well, so health now, yes. no more complication. Then I was in Brazil getting fat, <laughs> but everything was closed. Then, then I talked to my best friend here, the Vasilis Tetsianis, and he told me, Come to Vienna, I said, Vasilis, I can't go to Vienna. Come to Vienna, we found a way. Yes. So he's someone optimistic as well, like me. So, okay, I found a way, I take my things, I went to Vienna. <laughs> and here I am. <laughs> uh, Vasilis um, is a um, great uh, friend and uh, contactor. And um, of course, our friends uh, in the media uh, can uh, scroll down in our page uh, Vienna Quartiere Artistico and uh, can find uh, the interview with uh, Vasilis. was the first interview, actually, uh, that we did um, as we started with this, uh, uh, with this project. And it's still on uh, on our Facebook uh, page. And now that I'm mentioning this, um, this will be the first interview uh, that is going to be uh, broadcast in YouTube, uh, in my YouTube channel as well. So people, uh, go please right now and subscribe yourself at my channel. Criso Macariu Soprano and like and follow our page Vienna Quartiere Artistico in Facebook. Dear James, thank you very much uh, for your time. Uh, it was very, uh, it was a pleasure uh, meeting you from the first moment. Uh, and I have to thank uh, our friend uh, Vasilis uh, on this uh, because this pandemic brought also very beautiful moments and um, finding people that uh, love uh, music, breathe uh, music, uh, live for music in this, in this city Vienna, the endless city of music and art, uh, it's something that uh, we all need to be 
grateful and I'm very grateful uh, hearing your uh, what you had to say and I'm very impressed uh, for for your will and your uh, from your will and your talent thanks a lot I'm very happy to be here with you and uh, so nice interview and um, I'm very happy to be the seat as I told you this is the best seat in the world for music and the most big fortune is be surrounded by of nice people. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye.